and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. To talk with Neil, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward. Outside the 305 area code, it's toll free 1 800 944 WIOD. And Cellular One customers can call Pound IOD at no charge. Now, The Neil Rogers Show on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. It's Friday, you bastards. Today's fast-paced world holds its share of headaches. Hey, there's a thumbprint on this report. Do it again. Uh, yes, sir. You got a problem? Uh, no, sir. Under some pressure, huh? Yeah, it feels like my head's gonna explode, and aspirin doesn't do anything. Well, here, take some ibuprofen. Ibuprofen? Well, I'll try anything. <laughs> That dirty, rotten son of a... <laughs> who the f*** does he think he's talking to? I ought to make that little <laughs> do his own <laughs> report. Woo! Feel better? Yeah. What's in ibuprofen? Well, nothing we can admit to on the radio except our secret ingredient, screw them all which eliminates any inhibitions you might have about saying what's on your mind. Hey, Uh-oh, here comes your boss. Look, I want this report done, even if you have to work through your lunch hour, okay? <laughs> Listen, numbnuts, what are you going to get off your and do some work around here. Well, I see you take ibuprofen. Yeah. I take it too, you lazy piece of sh Oh, now listen. Now get the copier. No, ibuprofen. Use only as f***ing directed. Okay, F and uh, A, man. It's 10.07 at WIOD. Is everybody happy? Is everybody happy? Yes! God, they're a little slow on it today, but once they get it out, that's what Aaron said. Aaron Summer starts Monday night, 8 to midnight, the one with a great ass. And uh, Steve Dickel ought to know because it takes one. So anyway, we got uh, 87,403 for Center One, and we got all kinds of stuff coming up. Tuesday, we're going to be at uh, Pizza Trough from 5 to 9, Loft Trough. Oh, and guess what, George? We have lunch coming today. You don't even know about it. Yes, I do. I heard. Oh, and lunch yesterday? Man, that place across the street. I heard all about that, too. Street. I'm real pissed. I, I never had any food so... from there, ever. <laughs> well, Jason... I called Jason and gave him the Jason number and the contact says person and everything. Jason says if George's like daughter's girlfriend down the street has got a headache... Then the least that you can do is feed me. I said, okay, what do you want? And uh, he had, uh, I don't know. So I said, how about that great Anna Capri across the street, right where the, all the other 85 restaurants have gone out of business? And the only sad part of it is I doubt that we're going to be able to do anything for them. It's a really great, I mean, the food, I don't know about inside. I haven't been in there. But, I mean, as far as the food, everybody in North Bay Village ought to be on their hands and knees crawling over there right now for lunch. It is tremendous. We had rigatoni a la Anna Capri. And it was tremendous, and stuffed mushrooms, and delicious soups, and it was great. And today we got rigatoni's is bringing. Now, did you get to put your order in with the trouser trauma or not? I just said, bring more of the same. He eats anything. That's what Crystal said. Oh, and, you know, now that we're paying 32 cents for a stamp, take a look at this. Take a look at these two. Rick is still in the, uh, cleaning up his crap. Clean up your act. Look at this. Look at, look, look at the addresses. Northwest 39th place yeah. in Sunrise. I don't live anywhere near that. Here's one. Northwest 31st place in Sunrise. I get mail now yeah, that's for city. people like aren't even in the same city. Not even the same uh, anywhere. Like, oh, a couple of miles away maybe. Same zip code or at least part of the same zip code. For 32 cents a stamp, we're getting this tremendous service now. Then I'm out there getting my mail before I had a chance to look at it and see that most of it was for other people I never heard of and who will never probably get this. I wonder if there's anything good in there. Because it says, forwarding and address correction requested. And I felt it's not a credit card. I always feel to see if there's, like, plastic in there. Because then, that's a good deal. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? But a lot of times when it says, forwarding and address correction uh, requested, it's uh, a check. Couldn't it be? Should I open them? Would you open them? It was in my mailbox. You're right. It's my... Here, take these granny glasses and get them out of here. And uh, stick them up... Uh, somebody's butt give the old dickle a tickle but anyway let's uh hey have a great weekend and come back please so what do we got in here it's a um oh these are bills oh from a credit agency statement of account i'm doing these people a nice favor today look at that previous statement this is overdue baby this is overdue baby past due 135 66 george will take care of this Huh? Why don't we just take care of this for these people? They'll never even know what happened. They'll think Santa came a little bit late. Has Santa ever come late? Squirt, squirt. Well, better late than never. So, in other words, I guess the other one also is probably overdue. Just because it's got somebody else's name on it, if it's in your box, it's your property, at least as long as it's uh, in your box. Let's see. This one. Oh, look at this. 
Uh, now, what is this deal? This one? No, this is not a... Oh, yeah, here's one. Another deadbeat. $246 past due. Past due, past due. I should read their names on the air, shouldn't I? And really embarrass the crap out of these people. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just tossing the crap in a wastebasket. So there you go again. There's the Postal Service at work. I just, I don't want you to feel bad. We're just into the new year. But they just goosed us. And then my neighbor, my new neighbor across the street, she was walking her dog the other day when I went out there to get the mail. And she's telling me that uh, her birthday was a few days ago. Her mother, every year on her birthday for many years now, sends her a card with a $50 bill in it. Well, guess what? She gets the envelope, late, by the way. She gets the envelope, and it's been ripped on the edges, and the $50 bill, guess what? It's out. Well, obviously, her mom has finally uh, wised up. That's always a good scam. Say, you mean the 50 wasn't in there? When you send it, you just kind of, like, rip it along the edges yourself, and you make it look like it fell out? No, seriously. So, in other words, the postal carriers, even though we're now paying the extra 32 uh, three cents... So it's, uh, you know, so that they can make all that big bucks or whatever it is they're making. They still can't make enough money that they aren't going to steal crap. So shame on you. Where is Al Sunshine when we need him, man? Wrong uh, addresses. And there was a thing in the paper yesterday about in uh, Europe, they get mailed twice a day. Now, I hate to break the news to you because I am an old fart. I can remember when we used to get mail twice a day. There used to be a morning delivery about 10 in the morning. And then about uh, 2, 3 in the afternoon, guess what? Another delivery. Two deliveries on the same day. Now the one delivery, you're lucky if by 5, 5.30 it shows up at all. Pretty soon, you're going to have to get up in the middle of the night and go out and say, oh, I'm going to go check to see if the mail's here yet. Because they're busy. And if you, like in Paris, it said in this article yesterday, you mail a letter in the morning, and that same afternoon, very often, more often than not, the same afternoon, it's delivered. Now, that's not, we're not talking about Paris, Kentucky. We're talking about a city of millions of people, and yet somehow they can do it. Parlez-vous crappy? Huh? Pretty crappy, if you ask me. And I know we have a lot of postal workers who listen to this show, including my friend uh, who used to uh, be my mail. I don't know whatever happened to him. Who was getting ready to turn the show off a couple of years ago and made a point of coming to my door. Rick, did you turn it off yet or what? Yeah, we were ready to turn it off. It was getting kind of pondering. We were getting right, we were, had our finger on it. Yeah, I'll bet. A lot of those postal workers have their fingers on it. Believe me. Trust me when I tell you. But, uh, you know, it's not. don't take it personal, even though it's intended that way, but it's just one of these things that we're getting really porked off about the crappy service and the uh, constantly increasing rates. But I'm sure that Newt will take care of it, okay? They're straightening everything out. By, by Monday, every problem in America will be solved by the fascist pigs because we'll all probably be locked up somewhere. So let's see, we got Pizza Loft on the 5th, on the, uh, whatever the date is, this Tuesday, the 10th, 5 to 9 p.m. I'll be there. We'll have all of our stuff. I bet you Russ shows up, and he probably is uh, dating Jose that night. And then on the 14th, uh, we're all going to be, uh, Phil and Rick and Suds and I, at Peaches. And I'll be with Phil at Peaches Music and Video on Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale. That's the original Peaches. We'll have all our CDs, cassettes, and T-shirts. 1 to 3 p.m. on the 14th. And on that same day, at the Fountains on South University Drive and Plantation, Rick and Suds will be doing their thing 1 to 3. And then on the uh, 21st of this month at the Coral Square Mall in Coral Springs... I'll be uh, doing my thing up there, and Rick and Suds will be at Cutler Ridge Mall. Now, well, it says uh, time and mall location to be denounced still. We haven't decided yet. And uh, like I said, Rick and Suds will be at Cutler Ridge Mall on the 21st, and Phil will be at the Miami International Mall speaking a variety of tongues, as usual, so that uh, we still have a way to go. I, I want to tell you one thing right now. By Monday, when I come in here Monday morning and the uh, Queen Bee gets up on a uh, chair and puts the new grease mark up on that board. I want it over 90000 I'll tell you that right now. So a lot of these foot draggers who haven't been out to Peaches yet or called that toll-free number and donated Dime 1 yet or got any CD or cassette or any other guy, there, let's do it this weekend, okay? Let's do it this weekend and cut the crap. This is a real embarrassing thing that we don't have like two, $300,000 in there, even if we're raising it for like, for me, for whatever the hell it is, let's get with it. Anyway, 10 to 4, and of course, we got the big games this weekend. Everybody say George is like uh, hyperventilating about the big games. Also, we're hyperventilating about that great new schedule. Now, you do know the new schedule for Monday, don't you? Huh? For like nights and overnights? And neither does anybody else. See, you missed a real psychotic day yesterday. You picked a good day not to be here. Although, any day would... But seriously, you picked a real good... A psychotic day. Which, during the break, I'll tell you a great story. But anyway, uh... Yeah, so, like, I've been saying that we had a new show after Erin Summer. She starts Monday, of course, 8 to midnight with uh, phone sex. And then from midnight to 2, we were going to have a new show. That's what I was told by our eye-darting program director. You ever see guys whose eyes dart around like a ferret real nervously? 
But anyway, that's what he told me. Steve Dickel, he said that we were going to have like a new show midnight to do, and they were shoving, uh, uh, what the, what's their name, Don and uh, Dick at 2 to 5 in the morning. They were shoving Dick and Don. And now I find out that the new show from midnight to 2 ain't going to happen, but uh, I don't know what's ha- going to happen. I believe Don and Mike are moving back to noon, midnight to 3, and the uh, best of Neil are still milking these tapes from 3 to, I don't know. But I guess we'll all have to listen Monday night and find out together. 1016 at WIOD. WIOD. Premature modulation. Well, all right, sports fans. You from Disney. It's the enchanting story of a vicious Chicago gangster and his cartoon capers. It's the heartwarming Al Gabone. Hi-ho, hi-ho, let's make illegal dough. Run prostitution numbers too, hi-ho, <laughs> hi-ho. Yes, it's Al Gabone on an incredible ride through the criminal underworld with his singing Tommy gun. I'm going on a hit, gonna shoot some dumb nitwits. Al Gabone, it's the whole story from those wild bootlegging days to his conviction for income tax evasion. Looks like I'm guilty. This ain't my day. Looks like Scarface's are going away. And the whole family will shed a tear as Al rots in his sing sing cell. Someday parole will come, even though I am low life scum. Al Capone from Walt Disney. And coming soon, a real family favorite, Manson. Yeah, it's gonna be a blast. Neil, God. By the way, when Aaron Summer starts with passion phones on Monday night from 8 to midnight, Jocelyn Elders was inquiring along with many others. Uh, masturbation will be discussed, but will not be permitted during those hours between 8 and midnight. Just wanted you to know that ahead of time. So uh, we got the big games tomorrow. The Steelers will beat the crap out of the Browns tomorrow. I hate to break the news to you on that because uh, a lot of people are hoping the Browns win because then if the Dolphins win on Sunday, the game will be here and then my tickets will have some value. But I'm afraid that the Steelers will mop up the field there at Three Rivers with the Browns and Vinny Testaverde tomorrow. That's just my, I don't make predictions, but that's my prediction, that the Browns will kick their ass. Speaking of uh, football, by the way, and of course on Sunday we'll have like 85 hours of pregame foreplay. The bad news is, of course, and I don't want to dwell on this, even though I have uh, people I know who keep insisting, oh, no matter what they say, there will be a season. The Board of Governors rhymes with manure are meeting tomorrow morning, the National Hockey League, and I think at that point it will be adios. They're a ghost because they're rejecting the uh, pl- the uh, players union's latest uh, proposal and they're unhappy and they say to you and it's it's over. Anyway, there's a uh, survey now. What is this from? This is from uh, somewhere. We always get this stuff. It's from some damn business journal, South Florida Business Journal. Study says Dolphin fans just so so. Denver has the best fans. L.A. Raiders have the worst. It says, forget last Saturday's sellout at Joe Robbie Stadium. Miami Dolphin fans are just lukewarm when it comes to supporting their team. Not me. Not me. That's the, In fact, I heard Phil say the other day, and I think he's got a point. If you lend tangible support, if you buy tickets, then you're a fan. Even if you go and you don't root for the team to win, if you, lend your, if you go out and buy team paraphernalia, if you pay for parking, if you buy your own tickets like I have for five years, then you're like uh, supporting the team. Even if you don't uh, give a crap about them, or you hate them like poison, or if the coach is just uh, a brainstem. It said the conclusion of a just completed analyzation of attendance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Dolphin fans ranked number 16, mighty low, I would say, like way down there in the uh, middle, sub middle of the pack. The index was compiled by South Florida Business Journal through a research effort by its parent company in Charlotte, North Carolina, American City Business Urinals. The analyzation, which gives extra points to fans who consistently showed up to watch losers play year after year, ranks the Denver Broncos as having the most loyal fans. Denver was followed by four old NFL teams, the Browns, the Giants, the Packers, and the Eagles. Oh, yeah. If you go to see the Eagles, you must be a serious fan. The least uh, fickle fans were the Bears. Attendance fluctuated only 6% between the best and worst annual attendance between 85 and 94, excluding the 87 strike. The most fickle fans, this I love, man. This I absolutely love. I'll give you 28 guesses, and the first 500 don't count. Guess which team has the most fickle fans? Buffalo blows, and so do the bill. Oh! Buffalo Bills attendance fluctuated 52.1% during that same period of time. And, of course, all of us remember with great joy and vigor that last Buffalo home game when they still had a chance to be in the playoffs, by the way, but got their asses whipped soundly. Uh, It was a beautiful thing when the stands appeared to be very, very, very sparsely populated. 
the winningest team and the co uh, the coldest fans, Green Bay average temperature 28 points. Yeah, see, that's the thing. The fans here got a good excuse because the weather is so cold here during these uh, football months. That's probably a good reason why a lot of them stay away. Or maybe they're just sick and tired of all the uh, mediocrity. Maybe they're tired of Wayne. Maybe they're tired of Shula. Maybe they're just uh, a bunch of front-running phonies, which is probably the truth. And what's wrong with that? Well, now, what do you mean just listening? What is that? Hello? Why do you have just listening on there in this line? Oh, I didn't think we could be that choosy. Note. What is it? I was just listening. What do you mean you're just listening? I have nothing to contribute. I'm sorry, Neil. But what do you mean you're just listening? You're going to tie up the line all day to listen to the no, show? No, I told him as soon as that um, you didn't have any more room to, to just dump me. Okay. Well, at least he was cooperative with that, and I just did. I can't believe that. I thought we actually had a couple of calls on it. Well, we have a couple, but nothing too exciting here, because it's uh, a very dead time right now. Now, I could tell you about a lot of things in this place, but you don't want to get depressed. <laughs> But uh, that's another story for another day, as old Mikey would say, and look what that did for him. Let's uh, go to a lady in Miami. Hello. Bona Johnum. Uh, Neil. Eh? Yeah, this is uh, Diana Ruby. Listen to you. Oh, can... Jesus. Yeah, if you get a chance. Oh, oh. Hey, listen, if you... Ah! Listen, if you get a chance... Can't I talk to the guy who was just listening before? Oh, yeah. Ru uh, Ru what do you want, Ruby? Yes. Hey, I'd like you hey. to hear... Listen, I'd, like, I'd like you to hear the Chris Baker show last night. The Chris Baker yeah, show is... Yeah, uh, did you hear when I see everybody say goodbye to him? What is it? Everybody said goodbye to him. Why is he not going to be on tonight? I thought tonight was his last show. Yeah, last night was his last show. But you what's get on, a chance, please hear it. What, the, what do you mean, please hear it? Please hear the tape. Why? Because uh, it's very funny. Uh, if you get a chance... If he was funny before last night, maybe he'd still have a show. Oh, uh, yeah, but it was uh, very hilarious last night. Uh, Ruby, don't you understand I yes? have better things to do, like pick my nose, than listen to tapes of old shows on this radio station? Don't you get that? I'm sorry. And see, the reason he's going off is because you were listening to his show. Oh. That's the reason he's not going to be here well, Monday. Well, um... That's it. Yes, well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Ruby. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Good call. Best of the day so far. The only one of the day so far. So, uh, how are we doing so far? Pretty good? Sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like a real wiener today. By the way, I found a great new, not a new, but an old uh, Luis Miguel song that I'd kind of like skipped over in the past that I'm going to play 45 times today. Another obsession, a Luis Miguel obsession. Speaking of that, by the way, Monday on The Young and the Horny, for those of you who have to wait all weekend to find out, Monday on The Young and the Horny, Nick uh, goes over to see uh, Sharon again. After they had, uh, today you'll find that they kind of meet in school. Well, they're not really in school, but they're like hanging out at school because Sharon, unbeknownst to Nick, is going there to like uh, transfer. She wants out. She's going to go somewhere and uh, maybe even have a baby. But anyway, uh, so she's there, and of course he's there because he's going to go off to college and he's going to graduate early. And they just run into each other and he embraces her and they give each other a big, big kiss, a uh, lot of tongue, and uh, that, that's, you're going to see that today. But on Monday, goes over to her house, and uh, she goes into a big song and a dance about, well, she can't go anywhere with him, and she doesn't want to go out with him, and blah, 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 and he's getting mixed signals, and he's getting bent out of shape, and, uh, you know, so uh, she just storms out, and he uh, slams the door, like, pretending that he left, and then he comes back in, and she's bursted into tears, and she comes back in the, uh, into that little, uh, whatever, that cubicle that's supposed to be their apartment, and uh, she's got the mascaras running, and she's been squirting more than Jack all over the face, and, uh, and he looks at her like, oh, my, oh, my God. Well, I guess now that Chris Baker's not here anymore, can we play that, like, four or five hundred times today? Where the hell is that? You know, is there some special reason why we have this thing where because everybody steals everybody's stuff anyway, why do we have to have two separate things? Oh, my God. There you go. But not only once. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, there you go. Now I feel better. I feel more at home, like Chris is still here. So what do we got on tonight that Chris Baker's last show was last night? Oh, and don't tell me Steve Patterson, please. Don't say those two disgusting, grotesque, unmentionable words. Steve Patterson. I couldn't handle it. Here's Davey. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Um, listen, I got a little story for you about Alan Dresner. Oh, it's the Alan Dresner show. I forgot about that. What, yeah, what I was is listening this? yesterday and I heard about Everybody in this audience knows him. Alan Dresner. They can't find him, but everybody knows well, this him. this isn't a good story. Or what, are you going to rip point. him? Uh, what, is kinda. this going to be some kind of a slanderous thing now? Yes, it is. Well, we're not going to put that on here. Get out of here. Yes, it is. Call up to... Nobody in this audience knows Alan Dresner from Alan Sherman, okay? And he's dead. 
Let's get some people out here who put a little bit of meat on the table here today. Let's, let's sink our teeth into the reality of the world, huh? What about these abortion clinics? What about the war in Bosnia? What about the goddamn Republican Congress? What about Newt, Newt Gingrich's mother? Do you know Tom Snyder was starting that late, 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 late show Monday night after uh, Letterman? And guess who his first guest is going to be? You're going to puke when you hear this. I'll give you 85 guesses, and I just told you. Newt? Newt Gingrich's mother. She's hot. Bitch. I mean, what you, you talk about just neurotic repetition. Who the hell wants to see Newt Gingrich's mother at 2 o'clock in a goddamn morning? Why not have Christy Brinkley on there at 2 o'clock in the morning? How about David Brinkley at 2 in the morning if he can keep that one eye open long enough? Who the hell wants to see goddamn fascist pig, fat-faced, hypocritical Newt Gingrich's mother at 2 o'clock in the morning? That Tom Snyder, man, what a sense of humor he's got. <laughs> what a sense of humor. The Santa Claus of late-night television. Kind of a sour push, too, you know, when you come right down to it. 1029 at WIOD. When the Dolphins arrive in San Diego Friday, we'll be there waiting for them. Live from the Gas Lamp District, Defoe and Bo Camper on 610 WIOD. And that's just part of Friday's lineup. While Sports Talk 610 is live from San Diego, we'll also be live at Shula's All-Star Cafe in Miami Lakes with former Dolphin Jim Kick. Hey, it's a big game weekend. So we're thinking big. Jim Kick live at Shula's. Hooked up with Defo and Bo Camper live in San Diego. Friday night at 6 on News Talk and Entertainment Radio. 610 WIOD. 610 WIOD. Where the seven words you can't say on radio are down to two. Suck it in and hold it. Tommy Lee Jones turned critics' heads as Ty Cobb. But has history forgotten Cobb's outcast cousin, the funniest baseball player of all time? Bob Hope stars as Corn Cobb. Seventh inning stretch. Hold on. Is this baseball and aerobics class? Corn Cobb, a man who knew more about punchlines than baseline. Yo, the coach asked me why I hit that foul pop-up. And I told him because I couldn't fit the chicken in a toaster. Corn Cobb. It's the Zig Field of Dreams. Sacrifice. Hey, I gave it the offer. And the day baseball said goodbye to Corn Cobb is a day no one will ever forget. Today, I, I consider, consider myself, myself the funniest, the funniest man, man in baseball. baseball. Right here. Corn Cobb. Rated R for... <laughs> Orlando, do you hear that? That was definitely his tongue. I can uh, smell that anywhere. 1032 at WID. I do want to say this. I have renewed respect this morning for uh, old number 88. I know that he, you know, has his moments. That we get a little upset when he gets a little bit too carried away. Although he is Mr. Dolphin Broadcast. Make no mistake about that. But last night, I'm catching a little bit of his sports talk show. And sure enough, here is a man who's all of a sudden, I guess maybe he lost him for a while while Michigan was losing all those football games. But he must have found that old big pair that he was so famous for. Wasn't he famous for a big, well, a medium pair? And uh, had him uh, sewn back on, a la John Bobbitt style. Because last night he's going on about the jive-ass turkeys on U of M and what a bunch of assholes they are and their behavior is totally unacceptable. It's got no place on a football field. And, of course, uh, the, the front-running uh, Canes fan, well, that's just the Canes. That's their way. And he's just really ripping them and ass. Attaboy, Mad Dog. Yes! <laughs> Here is a man who's not afraid. See, that, you know, you can come on the air and kiss up to what you think is going to be the popular thing to say, uh, which there are a lot of people on the air who do that, by the way, who just are professional ass suckers. And, oh, yeah, they're the greatest and uh, whatever. Whatever they think the majority of the people out there want you to say. Make you very popular. You see, if you don't have some people pissed off, then you're not doing anything worthwhile. I guarantee you that right now. If everybody agrees, if everybody loves you, then you're doing nothing right. Now, here she is, somebody who nobody thinks she's doing anything right, and she's proud of it. Especially Bob Green thinks she couldn't do anything right, and she's delighted with that because just uh, aggravating him is what she lives for. And I'll give her several high marks for that. Let's see how high she can stand on the old chair. I'm not going to be happy with what? The new total? Yep. Well, it was 87,403. What is it, 405? <laughs> well, what, what does this include? It's, it's today's, today's peaches? No. peaches is not I understand that. Well, what do you mean I'm not going to be happy? I'm not expecting much. You mean from Capture Glory? Tell him to leave us alone already. He's a great guy, but he is so neurotic, for Christ's sakes. He ought to work here. It is very messy in here. That's because Rick just left. $87,485 is our total. That's, that's okay. By Monday, we'll have ninety grand. When you call uh, over at Peaches, 
When you call Joe, I guarantee we'll have 90 grand. Joe is the best. He knows his crap. We love you, Joe, over at Peaches. We love you. Even though you are a little surly at times, you're a hell of a guy. So anyway, that's not too bad. We'll have 90 by the weekend, and then we got all these other big events going. We're going to get to 100 if we have to get the last 10 from, uh, from Wayne Huizenga himself. We're going to get to 100 grand, or I'll uh, know why. Here's Sunrise on the Purple Line. Hello. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, Partner. <laughs> I was... Uh, uh wanted to comment on that uh, postal thing. Uh, same problem is happening at our location, and I called and complained about it, and they told me that they have installed some new, they're testing a new automated system that sorts the mail. Oh, it's working put, great. Yeah, and that puts it, you know, and, it, and then it uh, puts it into trays for them, and now the guys who, you know, these uh, postal guys used to sort their own mail and then take it out. Well, now the trays just come to them, they leave an hour later, that's why we're getting our mail much later, and uh, so then they're not doing the sorting, and this machine is screwing up bad. It, it, they do it up in Oakland Park, it was what they told well, me. Well, that's great. That means that we spend uh, the extra three cents on every letter, which is millions and millions and millions of dollars, so they can buy these new machines to screw up everybody's mail, and you can get everybody else's bills. That's great. Yeah, and then, and then, of course, what you have to wonder is who's getting your mail. You know what I'm saying? In other words, if I'm getting all these other people's mail who don't even live in my area, uh, who's getting my bills? Well, one day... And then probably in about a week, I'll be getting letters saying, Wait, well, you're past due. Those those letters always show up. You're past due. How come we didn't get your check yet? What it, what it, what's be? worse is that one day I found uh, about six envelopes that belong to me on the ground down down the block. Yeah. Now, that must not have been a missort, or maybe it was. But that had about uh, four thousand dollars of uh, you know receipt checks. Oh, nice! That were coming to us. So, Very you know, nice. You just wonder now where are they going the rest of the county when the machines miss sorting. So mm -hmm. anyway, just point of interest. Well, that we'll keep our fly on it for the next couple of weeks and see what a great job they're doing for you. And you notice how it's simultaneous with the uh, rate increase too. And then on top it's of just that, just like sticking it right in there and twisting it a little bit. And when you call, they just leave the. They just you know if you want to get in and, and you know and complain about. And have them try to do something about it. They just leave the phone off the hook so you can't get through. So yeah, well, they're, they're busy on a break right now. Uh, right. Don't don't be bothering them. Have a great day, Pally. Well, bye. See ya. I say uh, Federal Express is always a good way to go. If you, no, seriously, if you have anything important, they're great. FedEx. That's the only way to fly. I tell you that right now. The mail service blows. Why don't we open up our own goddamn mail service? Huh? That sure as hell beats being here with these people. 1037 at WIOD or Nickel and Dime Station. Pressed by the host, guest, or callers on WIOD are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors. All WIOD programs are copyright 1995 by WIOD Incorporated and may not be recorded or distributed without prior written consent. Gosh, Nick, everything is so big. I like it. I like it. Me too. 1040 at WIOD. Happy Friday to you. It's going to be a big, big football-filled weekend. And probably a lot of the women out there, the uh, the couch potatoes are out there watching their football, and the women are getting really pissed off. Although it would seem to me this would give them a lot of time to go out and screw around on the side. Sure does. And go to the mall with their, uh, you know, other, uh, with their lady friends and boyfriends and uh, whoever else they're hanging out with. And leave hubby sitting there with his 25 six-packs and uh, watching a ball game. That's where it's, uh, that's what it's all about. Sure is what? Frees up a lot of women this time of year. Does it? Oh, that's where you were yesterday, huh? So how's your daughter's girlfriend down the street that had the head cold? It's my daughter. Your daughter what? Is she very sick? She's very sick. What do you uh, mean very sick? Much better today. My wife was afraid that what it might she have got? been meningitis, but what it's is just a viral Meningitis? Thing. No, it's not. But that's what my wife was afraid that she had. In other words, she thought that's it was something deathly uh, serious, yes. but it's not. It's not. A lot it's of not. snot. A lot of snot. Like I said, it could have been bad, but it's not. Let's do Pembroke Pot... What happened to Pembroke Pines? I was just about to punch up Pembroke Pines, and they're gone. You know, if you people are in a hurry today, I don't have time for you, okay? I don't have time to uh, diddle around with people who are in a b too big of a hurry for me. We have two open lines. That we have nothing here is basically what we got. Two open lines in Dade, 751, two in Broward, 524, and a green line, 1-800. We got three stinking calls on the board. It's 1040 in the morning here already. Because we're not giving away any more of those CDs that uh, you locked away, and let's keep them there wherever you lock them until at least Monday. Oh, my God. I'm sitting in here these people on Rick's show this morning. Oh, are you still giving away washer and dryer? Are you still giving away uh, uh, wheels of uh, world of... Uh, oh, go away. My God. You would think that we were giving away something that was worth something for crying out loud. And let me say it again. If by some miracle, and it would take that, if Pittsburgh loses to the Browns tomorrow and the Dolphins beat San Diego, which I think they got a pretty good shot at that on Sunday, 
if both of those things happen and the AFC Championship game is here next week, I still have in a very special spot those uh, two 50-yard line seats. And by the way, the school teacher ain't getting them, by the way. Can you believe that? There's a message here for me to call the school teacher, the one that she and her father sit next to me at the games when I used to go. And uh, I know what it's about because I already heard from the uh, fat man, from Mr. Yenta, that Jeff moved her seats and they've been shuttled over to another set. Hey, that's your problem, honey. I like you. You and your dad, you're okay. You're nice. You're reformed. You're butched up a little bit. A nice uh, Jewish family there or whatever they are. But, uh, hey, I got enough problems of my own. I can't worry. That. I'm sure that's what she wants is to give me a, uh, and go on the air and to start uh, screaming and yelling. I can't fight everybody else's battles for me. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'm being nickled and pennied and uh, snorted to death in this joint. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, that last caller made uh, the comment of the fabulous service we're not getting from the Postal Service. They suck. Uh, you tell me about it. Uh, you also mentioned Oakland Park Boulevard. I'll give you a name in there. Joanne Leone. Her and I went round and round a lot about the mail really? that wasn't being delivered to my place. You went round and round with Joanne? Uh, Leone. Yeah. And I told her flat out, there's two reasons why I'm Sounds moving Sounds Italian to me. So don't mess with those Italians. You better watch it. Well, I'm one myself. Oh, well, you know what I'm talking about, though. Uh, yeah, I told her. I said, there's two reasons I'm moving out of Lauder Hill, and yeah. you and the lousy service I'm getting here <laughs> are at the top of the list. All right. I live up in Margate now, and I tell you, my mail is on time. It's perfect. I I'm moving to Margate. Better. In fact, I bet you in Margate they probably don't have all the repressive uh, ordinances like we do in the Acres, where every time you fart, you got to get a permit. Well, if they do, they haven't made me aware of it yet. There you go. I, th I say let's start promoting Margate, a great place to live. Yeah. Where the median age is 200. Uh, they don't bother me. They, they shuffle along, and I, I do my thing. And There's I something to be said for that. Then, of course, the in public. a supermarket, you just run them over with your shopping cart. Exactly. and Exactly. Uh, I'll be there this afternoon doing exactly Kick them out of the way. That. Excellent. Have yourself a great one. Good move, pal. Yeah. Thanks. There's a more smart man. He got there a lot of Lauder Hill, and he moved to uh, Margate. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. That's what Martha and Vandella said, and then a bunch of other people who covered that song. Uh, anyway, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who think that I'm going to discuss this story about the pizzeria, which I noticed Gary Stein. You know, you people are so predictable at the newspapers here, man, especially Gary Stein and at uh, uh, Ray Wretched. You know, it's such parochial yokels. Can't we, can't we just pretend to be like a city, which we're not? But wouldn't it be nice if we like lived in what we could call a city, a little bit, a little more maturity, a little bit more, uh, instead of this crap. Oh, they're picking on us. It's only the perception of all these bodies lying here. Always the same old crap. And now there's this story about the pizzeria, Big Louis. Speaking of Italian. Big Louis, and here's another big article. Seems Big Cheese took on Pizzeria, yada yada yada, about Doug Danziger and about it's a vendetta, and they're like trying to uh, bust down this Pizzeria, Big Louis, because they're uh, letting too many people in there, and the ordinance says they're only allowed 22 people in there, and they got too many people in there, and they say that they are they're concerned about the safety, which you know is a bunch of crap, and it's a vendetta, and the whole thing boils down to guess whose Pizzeria it is, George. I'll give you 685,000 guesses. Wayne. No. Bill Lirio. Now, do you think I'm going to go on? Yeah, right. He's got his hand over his puss. I would, too. That was the local section. The yokel section of the Sun Sentinel right there. You know, Bill Lirio, I'm so sick and tired of all this crap. It just, uh, everybody's out to get him at Big Louie's. Best people in the city. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Louie's in the Bronx. Well, maybe there's a connection between Big Louie's and Louie's in the Bronx. And right away, Gary Stein. Of course, it is a dead time. There's nothing else going on. I mean, we just got the, uh, you know, the Super Bowl coming up in a couple of weeks right here in town. Got millions of things going on here. He's writing about stupid pizza crap again. By the way, speaking of pizza, what time's our lunch coming? Do we know from a Trouser Troutman? We don't know what time it's coming? Here's a lady in Carroll City. Hello. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, talking about pizza, do you remember Alvy's? Do you remember what? Alvy's. What the hell is that? Alvey's Pizzeria in Pembroke Pines. No. No, you used to be a customer of ours. No. Yes. Oh, you mean across the street from where I used to live there? Right. And uh, you're, you're not, are you still there? Yeah, we're still there. We're oh. still going strong. Great. That's like by Publix. Yeah, right. We, your name came up the other day. Uh-oh. I was talking to my former boss, and we were talking about Henry, and he just discovered Phil Henry's program, and what a good show, and he enjoyed it. And I said, oh, I listen to him and Neil Rogers every day. He says, oh, Neil Rogers, he used to be a former customer of ours when he lived across the street. You bet. And he told me about how, he said, I never saw him. He said, my customers start coming in and telling me they heard about me on the radio. That's right. And he said, one day Neil came in to pick up an order. 
And I thanked him a lot for the free publicity. He said, and I had a hell of a time. Picking up his check, he said he wouldn't even let me buy him a pizza after all the free publicity. He That's gave. right. I don't like being a freeloader. It's embarrassing. It makes you feel slimy. I know. It makes but you he, feel he real went slimy. on and on and on, and we're just good customers. Uh, I mean, good. good yeah, customers. they had good pizza. I'm sure they still do. It was oh, right across yes. from. I used to live in Villas Lakes there on Taft Street and on right. uh, Taft and Hiatus. Taft and Hiatus. Right. Yeah, we're still the same place. Yeah, still the same good food. Anyway. Stop picking on a post office. My son works for the post office. I didn't say your son's a bad guy, although he might be. I don't know him, but I'm just saying the post office blows. He just worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day to get your mail out. Now you're picking on him. Don't you remember? <laughs> don't you remember? Because you've got to be as old as I am or pretty close to I'm it. I'm older. You're older than I am. Then yes. Don't you remember when we used to get mail delivered twice, twice a day? Twice a day, and the mailman walked. He took... He, oh, I that's did. right. I forgot about that. We didn't no. have mailboxes out by the road. He used to walk right up to your house. This was back home in Pennsylvania. He didn't, ha he didn't have one of those little uh, scooters to ride around in, one of those little uh, mail carts. He, he used to walk. He used to schlep car. that big thing on his back. Mm -hmm. He used to come twice a day. Right. For three cents. Yeah. For three cents, he used to come right. twice a day. Penny and a half I wish for, I knew a bunch of guys like that. Postcard and uh, penny and a half for... Uh, uh, Even Lisa wishes she knew guys like that who yeah. would come twice for three cents a day. Those were the days. Eight cents for the bus. Yep. yep. Right. Not, you can't live in the past. You can't turn it back. Although I think now that we have this new uh, new deal in Washington, they're going to turn the clock back about 200 years. Oh, yeah. All the kids are going to go to the orphanages. They're, that's right. Right. And we're all going to go to camp, and it'll be for free. Right. Well, you have a great weekend. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Go Dolphins. Okay. Go Dolphins, right. Let's go Fins, man. Where's that thing? Come on, let's get on a bandwagon here. Let's really build up the Dolphins here and pretend that I'm a bee, a big, a bee, bee, bee. That's enough. That's enough. Too much. Anyway, it's uh, 1049. And let's take a call from a lady in uh, Miami Lakes on the Purple Line. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Neil. How are you? Great. Listen, I have some gossip about the new blockbuster in Miami Lakes. Yes? Um, oh, and by the way, before you do that... Uh huh. There's a, uh -huh. There's a <laughs> blockbuster right by the sawgrass now that they built. They kind of like sneaked it in there by the... Uh, by the, uh, by the mall? No, by the gas station. There's an Exxon station or Chevron, Chevron station. They sneaked it like in behind there, between right in front of the Sawgrass Mills Mall and the Sunrise Boulevard. They kind of like sneaked it in, like in the middle of the night. One, <laughs> one day it wasn't there. The next uh, morning I'm driving to work and there's a blockbuster. Blockbuster music. But anyway, you were saying... Um, the Cypress Village uh, video store there, they took uh, Blockbuster and the Graham companies to court. Yeah. He's got uh, $100,000 in escrow, and he got a reprieve. He's going to be able to stay there for six more months. Yeah. So Blockbuster says while he's there, they're not paying rent to the Graham companies. So Graham companies offers Cypress Village like fifty grand to move out of there. They said, no way, they're going to fight Blockbuster. Well, good for them. Oh! <laughs> Maybe they can get some pointers from Bill Lirio. Look what it did for him. Yeah. Maybe they can sell pizza on the side, too. Yeah, maybe. And it can, they can uh, have the original Zit pizza. Maybe, maybe they can have the face of Wayne on a pizza. People are always seeing the Virgin Mary and Jesus on a pizza. Maybe we can have old Zit face on a pie. <laughs> Call it the Zit pie. Have a great weekend. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for the good news. Not everybody's going to roll over and lay down dead for Wayne. And by the way, come Tuesday, we have a couple of days we're investigating certain things that have happened here very recently, which I'm sure you've got a good idea what I'm talking about. Come Tuesday, once I finally get some answers, if I do, and I'm pretty damn sure I will because I'm uh, pretty pissed off about all of this. But anyway, uh, then the uh, stuff is going to hit the fan. Because remember what I said several months ago, if anything mysterious, if anything bad happens, forget about what it appears to be. Just look at old Crater Face. That's what it's all about. Because this is the way these people work. Squash everybody, even the $8 billion sisters. Well, it ain't going to work, pal. But just keep that in mind as we discuss some of these other things as we will. Uh, how's that phone line coming? 1051 at WIOD. 610 WIOD. More fun than waxing your bikini line. Look at this. I just uh, noticed a note here. I had seen this inside radio thing. Here's a note from uh, Nickel, uh, Steve Dickel. Neil, did this happen? If not, something go after inside radio. See, if he had any clue what was going on, and here I don't expect him to be listening all the time because he does uh, have that door closed in there. He's probably busy. But it says, Pax and Zeta drops classic rock for mainstream AOR. This is inside radio, which goes to uh, radio stations all over the country on fax. 
It says, that's today when Bud Paxson's Miami Station finishes its A to Zeta music stunt. Now, this was uh, yesterday. Meanwhile, there's a soap opera building. Crosstown talent, uh, talker Neil Rogers accuses the dumped Ron and Ron Morning team of using their on-air revelation about Ron Diaz's wife having AIDS to gain sympathy and stave off cancellation of the show, suggesting they're trying to exploit the AIDS issue. Ron and Ron have pronounced themselves devastated by what they claim was a sudden termination. Paxson PD Neil Mursky says it was all about lousy ratings and blah, 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 and over this, etc. Well, of course it happened. We had that on the air two weeks ago. That people in the business all over the place who had known about this uh, thing for months about uh, Ron Diaz's wife having AIDS, that it was not a big secret, that it was uh, pretty well known in the industry. They knew about it for more than a month over at Zeta. And the timing of it, according to a lot of people, and uh, that's I believe that. I believe that this was an, a desperate attempt to try to elicit a lot of support to rally the troops around. And I think it stinks, and that's my opinion, whether anybody likes it or not. I think that to exploit somebody's illness, no matter what illness it is, to try to, like, uh, get brownie points and try to, like, uh, hang on to a station, that's, that's bad. Could be wrong, but I don't think so. And as far as Nickel uh, Dime is concerned, get, uh, get busy in there. Do something. Where's that new schedule? Where's the new lineup for next week, Nickel Dime? Come on, let's, let's put out a lineup so we know uh, we can start promoting what's going to be on the air. Although, if it's done in Mike, let's, let's not. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. It is so great that you decided to stop giving away that free crap. Man, I am so tired of those people calling you up and sucking around. Yeah. Uh, it's just beautiful. Well, what did you call me for, sir? To suck around to see if you play some Lou Jack stuff. Oh. Would no, you? No. See, he's upset because people, because he wants to suck around. Oh, and by the way, I got another fax yesterday from that boy Greg uh, Putz. Even after the one I read on the ear, which I threw. If I see it's got his name on it, I just toss it now. Just absolutely use, hopeless. Take up Parcheesi. Go out and get some, uh, what the hell do they used to call those things that they used to sell? They were illegal. Punch boards? Way before you were born, George. They had punch boards, and they had, like, all these little holes in them, and they were like, um, it, was, it was an illegal thing. It was a gambling thing. Go out and sell some punch boards. Go out and check in everybody's mailbox and make sure that the mail is coming to the right house. That would be a good public service, Greg. Do something constructive. We have an open line in Dade, 751. We have one in uh, Broward, 524, and one on the purple line at Pound IOD. And you notice that no matter how I've tried, I have tried all week long because I believe it's something that's very, very, very serious, even though a lot of people take it cavalierly and most people don't want to talk about it, the thing with the jive-ass behavior in sports, especially on a football field, and not only, but especially at University of Miami. And uh, like I said, to hear Mandy, I was shocked. I was so pleased that I'm not, I'm not the only person that's got the balls to come on and talk about how unacceptable and embarrassing and grotesque and disgusting that behavior is. And the jiving around and dancing around. And, like, you know, there was one really good call. He, at least on Sports Talk, see, a couple of people will talk about that. But on this show, uh, all they want is something for free. But somebody made a very good point, and that is when you're going to go out there and behave like that, as unacceptable as it is, you better win every game, man, because you're talking to trash and uh, you're, not, you're not carrying the cash. You're blowing the big one. And that's why they're on their hands and knees in tears when it's all over when they get their ass kicked. It's a joke. It's pathetic. But hey, like Phil says, it's college ball. It's Little League, man. I've been trying to tell people this time that for years. Oh, how about those Canes? Wake up and get with the program, man. Elevate this community beyond a Little League place. It's Bush League. It always has been and probably always will be. Can't we be a city? Can't we be a real place? Oh, it's the, uh, what, what's the expression they always use uh, that they love to use? Oh, a world-class city. When I hear that, I laugh so hard, man, that my hemorrhoids start itching. I mean, a world-class city. Anybody who's been aiming like north of uh, Aintree knows that this is about as world class as Lutz. Get serious. Here's Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I got your best of CD. Great. That's awesome. I really like it. It is. I got a little story for you. Mm hmm. Um, been trying to find a job, and I've got long hair, so a lot of people kind of. Oh, Wayne will hire you. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I walked into a skate shop yesterday. And, oh, a skate uh, shop? Yeah, a skate shop. Mm hmm. And uh, I applied. And I heard the show, like, in the guy's office towards the back. And I said, oh, you listen to Neil? He says, yeah. So I showed him the front of my car. And I have, like, an airbrush of the, the CD, like uh, the Mona Lisa, on the front. Right. And uh, that was it for the stuffy interview. The guy relaxed, and he was smiling and laughing. And Great. I started 12. Outstanding. Great. I'm in See, I'm usually I'm hearing about guys that get pulled over and get a uh, double ticket because they had one of my bumper stickers on their bumper. <laughs> 
So this is like this is the second time that I've heard a story in the last week about somebody got a job because uh, they listened to the show. Oh, it's great. I, I'm I'm in heaven now. All right. Thanks, Neil. Good luck, Pally. Bye. Hang in there. How do you like that? So it pays to listen to the Neil Rogers show, whether they uh, you believe it or not. Just ask Wayne; he'll tell you. <laughs> What's the name of that thing, by the way, uh, that bit that we haven't played in ages about long-haired, freaky people need not apply that we were playing back in the days when... Uh, don't give me a I'll look about it. I'll remember before oh, the end of the... Oh, uh, my the God. I can't believe this. I can't believe it. You don't know the name don't of time. that thing? We're late. You know something? Rick Riley goes in the news five minutes after the hour. I'll go in the news whenever the hell I feel like it, and they'll like it. Lick it. A station too big for Randy Rhodes. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. They had a big gas problem this morning on the beach. Good morning at 11 o'clock. I'm Terry Griffin, 610 WIOD News. The U.S. military has sent 54 Haitians back to their country from Guantanamo. It is the first group of... This town is full of deadbeats. Shoot them in the leg. All right. News Talk and Entertainment Radio 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. To talk with Neil, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward. Outside the 305 area code, it's toll free 1 800 944 WIOD. And Cellular One customers can call Pound IOD at no charge. Now, The Neil Rogers Show on News Talk and Entertainment Radio 610 WIOD. It's Friday, you bastards. Oh! And we said long hair, hearing people need not apply. While I tuck my food up under my coat, went to cherries and asked the guards why. They said you look like a quiet, suspicious young man, and that won't do. at WIOD. The signs are everywhere, man. They all look like a big twisted cross hanging over America. As a matter of fact, next time you go to a ball game, to the racetrack, to any sporting event, you're going to notice that what used to be the Stars and Stripes is a giant swastika because that's where we're going now. 
And in case you missed it on 11 o'clock news, the Fuhrer over Jocelyn Elders, Joycelyn, whatever the hell her name is, doesn't quit. Now there's an outcry at the University of Arkansas Medical Sciences School where she went to teach after Clinton had fired her a Surgeon General because she had the audacity to tell it the way it is. Conservative state lawmakers in Arkansas say her views on abortion, drug legislation, and gay rights make her unfit for the med school, and at least one is suggesting that he and his colleagues might try to block the school's funding if she gets a job. So we don't like what you say. You can't work, you can't breathe, you can't live. We taught the truth and the about fact about masturbation. They should not be told lies. That, you know, hair is going to grow on their hands, they're going, warts to grow on their hands, they're going to go crazy, they're going to go blind. We shouldn't lie to our children about the facts. You mean they're not? What do you guys think about this penis thing? Oh, my God. So anyway, that's uh, the latest as we continue. I mean, they've only been in a like, couple of days. They don't even have their ass warm on a seat, even though they've been, you they've been working 24 hours a day, just like the Nazis were back at the beginning of Nazi Germany. Like rewriting the entire Constitution and kind of like taking apart you know, little things like the Bill of Rights, stuff like that. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463, 524-SIG-HEIL. And let's go to a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Really great. Good, good. Listen, my son's only a year old, and he's already playing with it. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, you his, know, own, you, his own, I would hope. I would hope so. That's good. A human being's only going to do what makes him feel good. There you go. So, um, hey, listen. Don't tell the conservatives that, though. <laughs> listen, first of all, I don't think I'm going to get my voice back before the game. It's only going to get worse. But um, has anybody called and told you yet about uh, Wayne Jr. in the paper? No. Okay, about his boat that was stolen. And to get it back, he offered two Super Bowl tickets. <laughs> It's on the front page of the local section of the Herald. Oh, the Herald. I don't read the Herald under penalty of death, but uh, I might but make an exception. Find, if I find a copy. It's great. But guess what seats he's, he offered? Nosebleed in the end zone. Oh, now you don't expect good seats just to get his boat back to you. Now you're getting a little bit carried away. It was a 31-foot cabin cruiser, and you know how quick they got it back after they offered the tickets? Two hours. Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> listen, if anybody out there who stole Wayne Jr.'s boat... Uh, he's got that boat. It's a 31-foot cabin cruiser? Right. I'll give you my two seats right on a 50-yard line. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> so bring it right by here. Just zip it down the bay. Just uh, We'll dock it right out here beyond until 2 o'clock, and I'll head on home, and you can have the tickets. you got them right here in the building. That's an awesome deal. All right. Hey, go Dolphins. Thanks. Deal. See Bye. ya. Okay. We can uh, put him to shame. I mean, what a piker. Oh, I'll give you a couple of nosebleed seats. Might even get a little oxygen for you if the coach don't use it all up first. Here is a shocking thing. I mean, this makes Joycelyn Jocelyn pale into insignificance. Andrew Greeley, as in going uh, west, young man, or was that Horace Greeley? Father Reverend Andrew Greeley, who's always uh, writing the stuff that gets the Catholic hierarchy very, very upset. The sexually oriented father says that Catholics really like sex. That's right. Catholics are doing it more than anybody else, according to the Reverend Andrew Greeley. More than two-thirds of Catholics engage in sex at least once a week, not necessarily with their mate, compared to 56% of non-Catholics. How do you like that? A big difference there. I don't know how big. He didn't uh, draw a map. Among older persons, half of Catholics, age 55 and older, reported having sex at least once a week, compared to only 40% of others. Catholics also score higher on sexual playfulness scales. For example, 30% of... Oh, man, the Pope is going to be foaming at the mouth when he hears about this. There's going to be a lot of these guys who want to know how come the altar boys haven't been paying attention to this. They also score higher on the sexual playfulness scales. For example, 30% of Catholics say they have purchased erotic undergarments either often or sometimes compared to 20% of non-Catholics. Even single Catholics are more sexually active than non-Catholics, really said. Just a third of single Catholic adults reported being chased during last year. Anybody been chasing you? Compared to 43% of single Protestants. Jews, of course, only do it when uh, the credit cards get revoked. But, I mean, that's just, an, and well, that goes on to a big thing. This is in the Herald of Today, as a matter of fact, on se- uh, page 6F, appropriately enough. Huh? Page 6F, as in Father. Under the religion side. What's that got to do with religion, man? What does that got to do with this? is disgusting. See, this is the impact of people like Joycelyn again. Now we've got these damn uh, renegade priests writing about sex. Pretty soon they're going to be having it. Then we'll really all be going to hell together. Father O'Toole, God. Exactly. Let's do a lady in Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Good, how are you? Are you Catholic? No. Okay. But I have That's a Catholic right. boyfriend. Oh, you have a Catholic yes. boyfriend. Uh-huh. Does he like doing it a lot? Uh, um, I don't know. I take the fifth. No, come on. His a family lot. might be listening, so oh, I have okay. to take the fifth. In other words, uh, only once in a great while. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, only he's once got an a good hour. Sexual drive. Okay. Very. 
help the appetite. He knows how to drive it, right. Exactly. Listen, did you hear that um, Rick Sanchez, you know how he would sometimes go guest lecture at FIU? Mm -hmm. In the paper yesterday, the Herald, I know you don't read it, he's, he's going to have his own class. Yeah, I heard Phil talking about that yesterday. Oh, they had the guy from it. Channel 7 on, and uh, he's going to be teaching people how to uh, make cocktails after you hit guys in your car, after you do a little <laughs> hit and run. He's going to teach them how you slide away from the cops, how you sweet talk them, and go home and have a couple of cocktails. Yeah, thought that was good. It's going to be cute, yeah. Um, I went to the Orange Bowl yeah. game, and um, I'm a UM fan, but I graduated from University of Texas, so mm -hmm. they're first in my heart, but I'm so far away that, you know, it's hard. Anyways, um, fourth quarter, the end of the third quarter, and we still had the lead. And some jerks behind us, as soon as it hit the fourth quarter, everybody puts their fingers up for four. And he's like, we got it. This is it. We're, we're home free. We yeah, won the game. They're home free, all right. Yeah, and I'm just going, oh, no. You know, there's no way we're home free, besides the fact that I knew we were going to blow it anyways. I mean, even after, it was still 17 to 9. What was yeah, it? Was, uh, no, 24. No, no, but no. it was still 17. Yeah, you're right. It was 17-9 to 9, even after they uh, had first and goal on the four, and Osborne said in that stupid uh, pass plan, first down, it got intercepted. I know. And it was still 17-9. to 9, Miami had the ball back. I know. It was yep. sick. Real sick. Um, I don't know if you remember, I called you about my dog being on Prozac. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. She's off. She's off? She's off the Prozac, and let me tell you, she has much more of her personality back. Yeah. So maybe... We should think about getting the governor off it. I, I was just going to say, you beat me to the punch. I was going to say, if you keep giving it long enough, she's going to turn into a she coon. No, I'm telling you. I'm she telling might you. have if I did. Uh, she might have. Because the governor, if he runs again, he's going to go after that she coon vote in the next election. <gasps> that's true. I'm telling you, that's what got him over the top this year. Yeah, was wow. that heavy coon vote. All right, Neil, that's, I'm out of material. So. Have a great weekend. You too. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Open line and date, 751, one in Broward, 524. W-I-O-D. Catholics really like sex. They really do. Oh, all right. All the Catholics are going to be calling on a passion phone. They're going to be having passion with their phone when Aaron comes on Aaron No Bra on Monday night. Neil, God. Anyway, it's 1116 at W-I-O-D. It's Friday, you bastards. That's right. 610 W-I-O-D. For better reception, take off your clothes and raise your antenna. Esta es el show de la mañana con Neil Rogers. Esta es su cerebro. ¿Tienes preguntas? Politicians have put orphanages back in the news. And that's why we're putting them back on Broadway. In the can't miss hit, written by that little Dickens, Newt Gingrich. Please, Newt. Please, may I have some more? It's Political Twist. Won't pay anything for kids. Not anything. Your welfare free ride is through. Political Twist. The story of one man with clout and millions without. Take them all away from them mothers. Boys town is where they should go. Here's what people are saying about Political Twist. I miss my baby. Mama, Mama, where are you? <laughs> Political Twist. It's the musical for the 90s. The 1790s. It's 1120 at WIOD. There's an open line in Dade, 751. And at Purple Line, now I'm starting to get a little bit p -p 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 pissed. You know what I'm saying? Because that Purple Line is our only link to the uh, people in the uh, all those little minivans out there. People are driving those little minibuses. They ought to, every one of them, be off the road. This thing in Dade County with these so-called, uh, and they're all Haitian drivers, too. I don't want to say that Haitians can't drive, but they can't. But, I mean, these, where do they find these people that are driving these beat-up old little minibuses? This is public transportation? Like I said, in a, in a major city, would you have a thing like this with these rickety old smelly uh, diesel uh, puking uh, oil burning uh, pieces of crap? With guys who just got off a banana boat who wouldn't know a driver's license if you stuck it up their ass, which is probably where they found it? Minibus. Yeah, man. Just let me weave all over from one lane to the other. i got to drop a few people off here like in the middle of the road. So get out of my way, you ugly face, you. Very nice. Pound IOD on the cellular one line. If that don't start ringing pretty soon, we're ju that's just going to be it. Kiss of death. Wayne's put us out of business. Here's Margate. Hello. Yes, Neil. Yes, sir. Look, I'm the manager of a restaurant in Coral Springs. Yes. And I'm an avid dolphin fan. I know you're not really fond of the dolphins. Am I correct? Right, that's correct. How, how come you don't like them so much? Listen, I don't want to... Do you listen to this show? Yes, I do. Then why do I have to repeat everything about what I've, just, I've gone over it a million times? Because I, they're all see, fat it, flobs? What? Because you say they're all fat flobs? 
What does it have to do with what they look like? Well, what does that have to do with it? I, I don't know. I don't like their attitude. I don't like the Shula. I don't like Wayne. I don't like the ambiance of the whole team. I don't like their attitude toward this radio station. I don't like the way they stiff everybody all the time. I, I just add Brian Cox makes me nauseous. Have they really stiffed you before? What do you mean, have they stiffed I mean, us? Have they really like said they'd be on your show and then they didn't? All the time. Not on this show, but on this station. I don't have guests on this show, but they've done it on Sports Talk over and over, more often than not. Since Brian Cox decided that since he just happens to have a show on QAM, that we're going to stick it to the IOD. Plus the fact that he's just without a sense of humor. They're just a bunch of spoiled uh, assholes is what they are for the most part. And I don't like them. If somebody's going to stick it to me, what am I going to do? Go and support them? Well, if you need any help getting rid of those tickets, Neil. What? If you need any help getting rid of those Get tickets. Get out of here. What an... See, there's what... I rest my case. If I need any help, I won't need any help, and you won't be getting them, that's for sure, okay, pal? If I need any help, the guy's bringing the yacht right over here now. Wayne Hazinga Jr.'s yacht is in the bay behind the station right now. I hope Rick Sanchez keeps his greasy hands off it, please. It's just been uh, polished and waxed, and the boat, too. And uh, I got my two tickets, and the guy who brings that uh, yacht is the guy who's going to get them, and you ain't going to see him. Got to, got, you know, got to go through this verbal foreplay. How come you don't like him? Everybody who listens knows the story. They know I'm not, I'm not going to go support out there pretend to support a bunch of guys with a crappy attitude who want to like uh, who have no sense of humor. From the coach to Brian Cox to a lot of his teammates out there. there you know, there's a few good guys out there. Danny, Danny is great. You're never going to get me to knock Dan Marino, even if he don't ever show up on our show. I don't care about that. He's great. One of the all-time greats. One of the greatest players ever put on a jock strap. Takes a lot of abuse from people who expect him to be perfect and win every game. But that's Miami, of course. Oh, the university lost a couple of football games. The sky is... Oh, jeez. Poor baby. I can just see at Michigan State, I can see uh, on one of the great institutions in this, in this land, I can just see they lose a couple of games, which they lose several every year, and nobody is all that concerned about. I can just see them running around, oh, the sky is falling, oh, we better like, uh, we better all uh, lock ourselves in our rooms this weekend and just uh, beat ourselves with chains. When are these people going to grow up already? And the thing in the paper this morning says Dennis Erickson's on his way to Seattle. It's just about a done deal. If he's got even a small brain in his head left after drinking all that milk, if he's got a small one, I mean brain, he'll be on his way to uh, San Jose, which is not far from Seattle, soon. Because I don't know the guy personally. The people in our sports department, including Defoe, they tell me he's a good guy. Although I still think he's a prisoner of the program. He isn't, has had no control over what's going on over there. It's out of his hands. It's beyond his control. This whole ambiance of this uh, barbaric crap, whatever you call that, that they're doing over there. And uh, he'll get out of here. Because the guy comes in here, he had the audacity to lose a couple of games. Oh, he's out. It's getting worse than Notre Dame. All you people out there who are always taking a shot at Notre Dame, which, believe me, nobody hates them more than I do. They're obnoxious. Lou Holtz should only croak a wicked death. In fact, that kid that carries his cord around behind him ought to wrap it around his neck. I'd pay admission to see that. Hang him up there right next to Tiffany a couple of notches higher. But, I mean, everybody's always pointed the finger at them. Oh, remember Terry Brandon? Oh, he lost a couple of games. You're out, Terry. This is a good religious institution. Praise the Lord. Let's do a 50-minute benediction because we're holier than everybody else and have a lot of sex like all the other good Catholics. Father. But uh, everybody's pointing at them. What about right here? It's become an obsession. It's like neurotic. Oh, they lost the game in the Orange Bowl to Washington. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like Al Martino. I think Don Corleone needs to come in and slap him around the puss a little bit like he did in The Godfather. Act like a man. That's what you can do. We'll send Tom Hagen to California or to Horseheads, New York. He'll take care of things for you. Then you won't lose no more football games. Then they will fear you. But in the meantime, cut the crap. Anyway, where are we going? We're going to a mo mobile in Coral Springs. Hello? Brian Cox sucks. And yeah. Here's a lady in uh, Boca. Hello? Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think Rush Limbaugh is a Republican demon, and I certainly pray he doesn't spread his semen. For if he does, then the world over, there'll be Doles and Thurmans and Gingrichs and Clover. So I say to him, you know dear Rush is, of the Right. That's that chronic woman. We have an open line in Bar. You know who that is. That's the one from Loxahatchee or wherever the hell she's from. You know that. You wouldn't know that voice? Oh, come on. Open line at Broward, 524, one on the green line, 1-800-944-9463. Don't be saying uh, disgusting things on the air like Newt Gingrich, okay? Do you hear what she said? And then to make it even worse, she compounded it with Dole. 
Here's Miami Shores. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Uh, you know and I know that in 86, when the Hurricanes went out to the Fiesta Bowl, probably the most talented Hurricane team uh, that choked, yeah. had they won that game, fatigues would be the uniform of the day today for not only the Hurricanes and the rest of the country. Wrong. Bottom line is Wrong. Wrong. If that's the case, then how come since they've won four national championships, right. how come that all the other teams aren't out there jive-assing and doing the same? You think that uh, Joe Paterno is going to allow that to happen? Oh, no. Not any, cl not, not any clash. Anybody with any clash. Do, right. do you think Lou Holtz, as much as I dislike him, do you think they're going to let that go on at Notre Dame? No, but what, I, what I'm trying to say is that the Hurricanes, but the bottom line is Erickson is a prisoner, and if they win, but, 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 behavior but, but don't try to extend it to everybody else because oh. the coach, he's the one that's supposed to be in charge, and the inmates are running the asylum in that particular institution over there, which is one of the reasons that all this fraud and all these Pell Grants and all this scandal, and again, they're not alone. I mean, that's going on everywhere. Right. But the fact is, this is why that's all gotten out of control, is because they have this obsession with winning and winning and winning. And every, you know, Ted Foote, who's a turd burger, but nonetheless, right. a few years ago, he says, oh, well, you know, we have to get back to academics at the University of Miami. And everybody's saying, get out of here. Even Mandich is saying, here's a guy who doesn't want to shower with the guys. He doesn't understand what it's all about. See, that's the problem with America is the dumbing. That's part of the dumbing of America is that being a jock is more important than uh, having a, a, a brain. I agree. garbage. I agree with you. Here's another example. And it takes no talent and no intellect to go out there and do that step and fetch it routine. And I'm going to tell you, I, and I know, I know this for a fact, that most people who are listening to me right now and all week since I've been talking agree with me, but they don't have the balls to say it. I, it's, it's pathetic. I think you're right. I it's think embarrassing. I, if black people aren't embarrassed by the behavior of those black athletes, then there's something wrong with them. I agree with you. Uh, here's another example. University of Michigan. If you look at the basketball team with that Fab Five, uh, with the long shorts, they basically ran that asylum. That coach, Bill Fisher, pretty much didn't know what was going on. Yeah, but he's 200, he's 200 years old. Who, Fisher? Yeah. He took over for the other guy uh, who got fired and oh, went that, to Arizona. Which guy? I, I don't know. Who follows the University of Michigan <laughs> basketball? Anyway. This, uh, two, which, which one was the old guy, the one that looked like he was in a coma on the sideline? He looked like John Wooden plus 100 years. Yeah, uh, he's gone. Oh, okay. Um, two things that, that really irk me as far as the celebration. One is when, uh, now the big thing in the NFL, in fact, is you slow down at the 15-yard line and you walk into the end zone. Oh, yeah. If that isn't a show-up, right. if that isn't the most ridiculous thing to do... And the, yeah, but let me, let me ask you, know. you something. Do white guys do that? On a whole, no. No, no, I agree with you. They do not do that. Why is it acceptable for black athletes to be doing all these, and Deion Sanders to be doing his jive-ass crap? And, of course, when the uh, kids see that, they're trying to emulate that behavior like it's acceptable. And white guys, for some reason, don't do that. Even the guy the other day brought up Mark Gastineau. Mark Gastineau, did, I mean, he was an asshole, and he used right. to jump up and down Big and asshole. stuff. But, but he wasn't doing the kind of stuff we're talking about. Right, no, he was just an idiot jumping up and right. rubbing his head and, you right. know, going nuts. He was just yeah. a self-aggrandizing asshole. Right. Uh... I guess because the announcers, I think, are afraid to uh, be labeled racist and, uh, and afraid to stay, say that it's, it's ridiculous behavior. On a whole, most of them, like Hank Goldberg, who, for instance, says it's exciting and they should be playing for oh, exciting. Oh, he's yeah. such a shill. He's, exactly. He kisses everybody's ass, whether it's U of M or the Dolphins. He wouldn't have the balls to, uh, to give his real opinion. I, I guarantee you he doesn't really believe that. Not a it, chance no. in a billion. Well, in, in closing, Hank, if they exciting. did that, if they did that in baseball, they do do it in baseball. Bobby Bonds uh, showed up uh, Bob Gibson like he does by right. looking at the right. ball. His head, and you're a baseball, big baseball fan. His head will be handed to him at next at bat. No question about Am it. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely correct, sir. Have a great weekend. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Open line in uh, two of them in Dade seven five one nine four six three. Hey, stupid! Just calm down, Hank. You'll be all right. So anyway, the hockey season, it looks like it's uh, definitely off. It's the uh, 6th of January. They're, having, they're holding their final meet, the Board of uh, Governors, tomorrow morning. And it's a sad, sad, sad day, you know. But you know something? We'll survive without it, even though I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off, like Brian Cox. I'm real pissed off. But I'll survive without it. And it'll kind of like, uh, if this is what it took with baseball and hockey to bring reality back and put sports in perspective and salaries back in perspective and stop all of this bull crap or at least slow it way down, well, maybe it was worth it. But in the meantime, of course, the baseball owners are saying, well, we're getting ready. We're, uh, we're trotting out our first uh, amateur hour ball players here. We're getting a, oh, give me a break. If they really believe, if they really believe that you folks are stupid enough to pay big bucks to go out there to sit in the, in the just absolutely sweltering heat and humidity in the middle of summertime to watch a bunch of goofball juveniles playing baseball. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the Marlins. That's right. 1132 at WIOD. 610 WIOD. The only good Canadians are still in Montreal. Oh, my God. If you play Hank Goldberg again, I'm going to f***ing throw up.
Hank is God. I love Hank. Oh. I, I'm having a gay affair with Hank. Hi, I'm fitness guru Susan Powder. It's the time of year everyone tries to get in shape. <laughs> it's also cold and flu season. And now, with my new video, Cough Aerobics, you can use those gut-wrenching coughs and sneezes to lose your gut. Yeah, but I don't have a cold. No problem. Here. Oh, thanks. You see, when you order Cough Aerobics, you get my exciting new video. Yeah. And a lot of used Kleenex. Uh, ew, I, uh, 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 and three and four. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cough Aerobics is a great way to get your heart pumping and your nose running. I can't breathe. Oh, suck it up, you wuss. Oh, okay. And two. <laughs> And three. And I'm feeling the burn. In your abs and thighs, right? All in my nostrils. Cough aerobics. Catch the fever today. <laughs> oh, oh, what a hunk. Suck it in and hold it. 11.34, WIOD. Phil Henry at 2 this afternoon. And, of course, uh, Phil will be out on the road, I assume, between 5 and 6, won't he? Where are they going today? Do we have any idea? We don't? Well, let's not get too carried away. And how about that schedule for Monday night? Okay. I know I'm starting to get a little bit pushy now. Just calm down. Mind your own business. Yeah, but... Let's go to uh, Sunrise. Hello. Hello there. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Good. Good to hear it. Um, Ron and Ron's off down here. Do you know if they're uh, still on up in uh, Tampa? Yes, they are. They are? They're on in Tampa, Orlando, and uh, the only places they went off is Jacksonville and Miami. And Miami. Yep. Uh, okay. And uh, did I hear you yesterday comment on, uh, you said Costa? Did the players don't play as well for Costa? I said that there are very strong rumors from people who are in a position to know that the black players, that there's a ra uh, racial uh, rift on a U of M football team. And the rumor has it that black players, because what's the other kids, uh, the other Collins. quarterback? Ryan yeah. Collins. They don't uh, want to play for, they don't want uh, Costa to be quarterback on the team. And as a result, that uh, there have been a lot of drop passes and they don't yeah. pass block and uh, they, they don't like him. Right. Which, if, if that's true, of course, is uh, scandalous. Yeah, when I was watching that game and you said that, it kind of makes sense, but that's so hard to believe that they would do that, you yeah. know, to lose the game. Yeah, because I sure don't think they want to, you know, uh, lose the game. But right. on the other hand, maybe they want to get Collins in there in the second half if Costa got, took enough punishment. I mean, he was on his ass every play yeah, in that game. Yeah, I can't remember one play, even on running plays, where he wasn't he was just getting, getting brutalized. Abused. Yep. But um, what can you do? And now, now I'm beginning to understand why he's got this habit of always opening his mouth after the game and pointing fingers. Right. Because he's the guy that gets blamed all the time, and they're, they're laying down for him. I mean, they're just not, they're not doing anything for him. blasted back there. Yep. Yep. And uh, Dolphins, I think they're going to do it. Think yeah. Going, going to Super Bowl. Good. They're going to what? Going to Super Bowl, Going to the Super Bowl. That'll be ugly, but uh, hey, at least they'll be there, right? That's right. It'll be ugly. We'll just all sleep on that day. Have a great day, Pally. Bye. Okay. Dolphins, Super Bowl. Here we go. My Dolphins, baby. Right? But the, the, um... Shoot, Lanny boy's gonna have some fun. You turd. Gonna move the ball on everyone. Well, the Pats and Jets don't stand a chance. We need some help. Gaston will never do a single sack dance. We need some help. Gonna shut you down to a big zero. We need some help. Go, you dolphins, go fish, go. We need some help. Go, you dolphins. Time Shula, I go. Oh, it's uh, 11:37 at WYOD. That's that could be the all time right there. And I'm sure the coach, uh, with his great sense of humor, I'm sure he understands it's all just in good, clean fun. We have an open line in Dade. Of course, he's not Catholic. Open line in Dade, 751-9463, 751-WIOD. Let's do uh, Hollywood, shall we? Hollywood. Hello? Hollywood is gone? Late. Like I said, Hollywood's a little late. Yes. That was good. That was excellent, sir. Nice effort. Wait. Uh, yeah. Okay, and he just uh, stuck the phone up his ass. Good to, uh, good to get rid of those hemorrhoids, man. It works like a charm. Open line in Broward now, 524-9463. Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Okay. Why have you got your radio up? Why? Yes. Because now you're going to get all confused and it's going to make everybody very upset, including me. That's Just, true. Yeah. So speak to me and forget about the radio. Okay. What can I do for you? So, um, so how are you um, doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Fine. What is the purpose of your call? Did you call to speak to me about something to uh, offer your uh, opinion, your analyzation of the uh, world affairs? What is it? <laughs> what do you want? Sorry. Sorry for what? Never mind. What did you want? You called for a reason. Spit it out. 
Even All Dr. Right. Ruth says, when in doubt, spit it out. Come on, you can do it. I want to give you the courage to be yeah, a... Yeah, I called for a reason. Okay, well, what is it? Well, do you know that 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 lady, what's her name? Um, well, let me... A, is this a powder or something? Is this a woman? Is this yes. A, it is, a woman. An adult woman. Yes. Right, okay. I just want to make sure, because you sound you're getting a little spastic. Susan Powder with the, the right, with the Katie Lang haircut, yes. Yeah, isn't she, I mean... What about her? No... What about her? Say it. Just say it. This is a ama- oh, she hung up. And on Monday she won't be able to say it anymore because Newt Gingrich is passing the law over the weekend. Whatever she was going to say about Susan Potter, po- uh, Potter, forget it. Boy, you talk about sad. This is just it's just a phone conversation. What are these people all so nervous about? Oh, I would never call him. I'm intimidated. Well, stop being such wussies, man. God like that woman that day in Homestead. I thought she was going to, like, have a stroke on the phone. Uh, 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 yeah. Like, what's her name this morning? They're called Ruby. Yeah, Ruby. I love Ruby, though. She's a nice lady, but just don't call the show, please. Look what you did to Chris Baker. Called him once. He's off the air. Fort Lauderdale. Hello. <coughs> oh, that was good. It was great. Um, I wanted to how'd talk- you, how'd you, I did everything in my power to try to drag her out and get her... Because I know she didn't just call to diddle around. She wanted to say something. She just didn't have the balls. Oh, you know she picked up the phone. She, she was a lady with no balls. She held on for 20 minutes. Right. And, and uh, then she just couldn't spit it out. Susan Powder. Boy. What right. about Susan Powder? Stanky <laughs> bitch. But anyway. The Don Shula car is the funniest thing. It is. Um, Don Shula! I f***ed him! Oh! <laughs> it's the best. And then afterwards, when he says, Thanks, honey. Then I really like it. Yeah. All right. Um, as bad as the uh, Jim Mandich call was, uh, the interception return, mm-hmm. that is the funniest thing. I thought you just said the Don Shula thing was the funniest thing. Prior to How that How can guy. there be, like, two funniest things? That's right, like having the, the 85 best uh, Mexican restaurants in town. They can't all be the best. They're both good. The, pur- the purpose of my call. Um, the one thing that I... That well, it wasn't Susan Powder, was it? No. <laughs> The thing that stood out in my mind with the the Orange Bowl was the kid at the end, the Nebraska guy that scored the two touchdowns towards the end. Yeah. After he scored, he he laid the ball down. Right. And oh, they weren't doing any of that crap. <coughs> Tom Osborne is. In fact, you'll notice that even though they did dunk him with the uh, Gatorade there at the end of the game, uh, very reserved and uh, yeah. no no nonsense. They don't they don't play that crap. That's right. And there's and there's there's. Sports people in this town that defend that, and I, and I it, don't it's see in, it's it's indefensible and inexcusable and unacceptable, especially mm-hmm. at a collegiate level. Yeah. it's not acceptable. These these are just a bunch of kids. That's right. all. They have no business going out there and acting like a bunch of jive ass goofballs. That's not what people pay their money to see. And if they do in Miami, then there's something wrong with this town and with that university. And I think there is. Well, it's there's barely, something desperately wrong. It's barely a cut above high school football. I mean, I watched almost every bowl game. I saw Alabama pull the game out there. It was an exciting. game game there, the Citrus Bowl. They saw Barker through the touchdown pass there at the end. It was a very exciting game. They came from behind. I didn't see any of that going on in that game. Yeah. Any of it. I watched the uh, the Ducks and Penn State. I didn't see any of that crap going on in that game. There were like 575 million yards offense just by the Ducks in that game. There were an exciting game. Didn't see any of that. You can have excitement. You can have great plays. You don't, that, that crap is unacceptable. Well, I think Erickson's out of there. If he's, if he's smart, he, he's going to be gone. And he, well, I don't know if he's smart or not, but if he's got half a brain, he's out. Well, he could if he's got around. even a small brain stem like Shula left, he's out. <laughs> well, he could, listen, he could stick around for another ten years and be and be one of the best, you know, all-time winners. And, and take a lot of abuse. Yeah, or... Take a lot of abuse. Or, you, know, you look at a guy like Paterno, I don't like Paterno, but you look at a guy like him, and he's been there a million years, and he's won a billion games, and they don't give him any crap. I mean, they treat right. him like uh, the king of the universe up there. Well, he's suing, the, he's suing UM to uh, reimburse him for the legal bills for that Forte suit. And which was just in the paper today, and you're not, you know, you're not going to sue your university if you're planning on sticking around. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, anyway, so he, I guess he got. He's uh, gone. Yeah, says so in the paper he, today. It says kiss him goodbye. And and he, and he got Edwin Pope last week to write uh, that you know he was definitely sticking around for. Uh, for one, you know as well as I year. do. When somebody says I'm definitely sticking around, that's like when an owner says I'm giving you a vote of confidence. That means have a nice life, goodbye, start packing. Yeah, well, have a good weekend. Then. And you too. Thanks. See ya. Open line in Broward five two four nine four six three five two four W I O D eleven forty four and six ten W I O D reminds you friends don't let friends listen to anyone else. It's Friday, you bastards. 
Susan Powder. You know her as the loud, bald-headed infomercial queen with a bikini wax job. Okay, okay, I was fat, but my ex-husband is a jerk. Now she's back with a new self-help tape that helps you deal with the jerks of the 90s. You gotta eat, you gotta breathe, you gotta swear. Come on, you gotta start the obscenities. Excuse me, wait, hold on. What I mean to say is, you gotta start the f***ing obscenities. Susan's been through it all, and she knows how to deal with it. Every morning I wake up, look in the mirror and say, who the hell's gonna f*** with me today? She's just like you, but she's making a lot more money. I'm just a housewife who figured it out. If you shave your f***ing head, wear tight f***ing clothes, and get $87.50 for a video, you'll make a shitload of money. Learn how to deal with life in the 90s with Susan Powder's newest video, Start the Obscenities. What the f*** happened to my hair? Available wherever stupid ass like you buy sh like this. Okay, I think we answered that uh, lady's question. 11.47 at WYOD. Let's go to Boca. By the way, the food is here from Rigatoni's. I just thought I would mention that for those of you who like to hear us eat on the air, which we haven't done too much of lately, but yesterday and today, two days in a row. But this looks well worth it at half the price, at five times the price. Angel hair pasta and Italian sausage. We got Rigatoni, four cheese Rigatoni. We got uh, baked ziti, right? Am I right? Am I guessing good? I can uh, smell it all the way over here. It's beautiful. And if George ever gets through potchking around, it's going to be great. Rigatoni's, by the way, is at 3333 North University Drive between Sheridan and Sterling Road in Davy slash Hollywood. Officially Davy, but it's really Hollywood, okay? Unless you park your horse. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful thing. Let's go to uh, Boca. Hello. Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. So good to hear your voice. I bet it is. I'm uh, down on vacation going back tonight. When I get up in the morning every day and I start talking to my dogs, I say to myself, boy, it sure is good to hear my voice. Then I know I'm alive. Exactly. Son of Sam was hearing voices like that, wasn't he? Mm hmm From his dog? Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I know you're a big fan of The Godfather. Um, Me? Yes. That's right. Not the Don, uh, Don Shula, but the Don Corleone. Mm-hmm. Um, now, do you, are you familiar with another uh, epic gangster movie? Miller's Crossing. Yes. Are, no, are you... Uh, Weak. Weak? It's all right. Oh, Neil. I would hardly say it's an epic. Well... Is that the one where he takes him out in the woods and is supposed to kill him? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. It's all right. Yeah. I've well. seen it about two or three times. It's all, in other words, if I saw it two or three times, it can't be that bad. True. True. It's all um, right. Okay, I just wanted but to... But don't put it you. in the same league with The Godfather. Yeah, well, different, but, uh, but, but good. All right, Neil. Uh, out of material, <laughs> that was about it. Have a great day. Yeah. Great weekend. See ya. Thank you so much. Beautiful. All kinds of sausage here. Got a little garlic bread. We got cheese wrapped in uh, prosciutto, I believe that is. Am I right? Yes. Oh, all kinds of, like, pepperonis and salamis. Like maybe Genoa, perhaps. Am I right? Yes. Or mortadella, or whatever it is. It's a beautiful thing. And fresh, uh, I don't want to say buffalo mozzarella. Would that be a bad thing to say? Don't say the buffalo part. Here's uh, a lady in Key West. Hello. Neil, honey. How you doing, sweetie? You guys are killing us down here. No, With what? No star IOD anymore. I mean, you oh, cut we're, us yeah, off. Yeah, we're killing you, cut right. us off Yeah, we cut you off, right. But you have a small, loyal following, like mm -hmm. me. Well, what do you mean, we cut you off? We had nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, it keeps going back and forth. No, it's I mean, not It's not back and forth so at all. So it's for real, it's them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, then they're killing us. But, any, but, I mean, you guys, you should have a, a number where we can call you free, man. It should be free. What, what do you mean by that? For Key West? Yes, from You've got to be County. dreaming. You've got to be kidding me. But I would call you, Neil. That's why we don't have it. No, that's not very nice. I'm trying to be nice to you. But no. listen, here's... Let's get to it. Let's stop with all this foreplay, because I know this is not why you called. Will you tell me the I truth I know you about called something? about Susan, Susan Powder. <laughs> I, she's too weird, man. She was good, wasn't she? Great. Was Susan or the caller? The caller. But I can understand you're a little bit like my husband, because you said you were giving her every opportunity. But I you were was. Saying, come on, come on, get with it. What is it? What is it? Tell me what you want. And... Yeah, but see, it's well. a radio show, and the audience is going <coughs> like this. I mean, you can't let the audience go into a coma while you're trying to get this woman to say something. You know, just say something. That is correct. Like sir. on that bird, I hate the bird car, where he says, just play anything, play something. Uh, that and he is keeps talking. Question. In her case, it was the opposite. Okay, here's my question, and I want What's you to question? please tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. First of all, don't you think that the past two weeks were great short Fridays and no Mondays? Yes. That's the way of the world, as yes. it should be. I think so. But... Right In before fact, I went away for me, the holidays. Let me give you a little more enthusiastic answer than that, by the way. Okay. Here it is. Yes! <laughs> yeah. That this is, is definitely that. the way it should be. I love him. In I mean, fact, they should give us a lot of Friday and or Mondays off. But, exactly. Uh, they would have a happier oh, I, I, I will say one thing about this company, and it's about the only good thing I can say for them. 
is that when you go, you take your vacations, and like I've like a kind of hoard extra days. You'll notice sometimes I'll take off on a Thursday and Friday, and then all through the next week, and I've added tacked on a couple of extra days because then when you do that and you have the extra weekend in there, it really makes for a good like about a ten day vacation. And they they never say a peep about that. And of course, but if they did, I could tell them where to stick it. You're the golden goose, Neil. They yeah. would peep me, believe yeah, me. Yeah, but I noticed uh, Rick and Suds did that the last time too, and I hope that uh, a lot of people start doing that. I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings for management, but uh, time off is well invested. It's a good investment because then you come back all with your batteries recharged like Sally. I agree. So here's my question. Mm -hmm. Before I went away, um, I listened to your station all day, every day. And I think I've, uh, I felt pretty good about myself being clued in with our buddy Phil Hendry. Yeah. The Friday before I went away, the Friday before Are, Christmas. Did you, uh, yeah. Was that business with Bo Camper for real? No, he, he uh, Phil told about that. Uh, but I didn't. I was away. That's See, that's I'm the only him. thing that Phil has ever done that really I didn't like, and it wasn't. It wasn't that I didn't like what he did. Boat camper the night before, which obviously you don't listen to sports talk, and why should you be Actually, the one? Actually, I heard about two minutes of him pissing because he wasn't at the party. That's all right. I heard because I was going to the grocery store. Well, he I, I didn't hear it either, but evidently he went through a contrived deal about the Phil and this and that, and Phil is uh, hurting his uh, his livelihood and yada 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 and all this other crap. Oh, that's beautiful. And, uh, and they, you know, it was all contrived. The whole thing And then was. evidently, uh, little Andy got his nose in the middle of it, and they set this thing up for the next day, <gasps> and it was all contrived. And Phil finally came on here and fessed up about it later in the show. But if you only heard the first part of the show, a lot of people thought it was for real I and that even, they were really having a big feud. I and, even called and said, like, Bo Camper's a crybaby. Go yeah. for it, Phil. Mm -hmm. He got me, ma'am. See, I, 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 this is one thing that they're doing here, which I am just vehemently, I mean, absolutely... A hundred, I mean, with Mandich, Mandich is a character. He doesn't have to put on any phony. He's just a nutcase, and everybody loves it, or at least most people love it. But when these other guys want to start trying to be comedians, and they want to start trying to do our shtick, and then this maniac program director wants Defoe to start playing comedy stuff that we play during our shows, I mean, you know, we got enough people ripping off our stuff already. We don't need the sports guys trying to be amateur Neil Rogers and Rick and Suds and Phil Henrys. I don't ridiculous. Make, I don't want to make you mad. But and I know that you say, like, you don't get it. Why do people want to look at me through their binoculars and they expect me to put on a sideshow when they come meet me somewhere? When did I say I don't get it? I don't get it enough, but that's another show. Oh, <laughs> okay, but here, here's my question, and I'm yeah. not trying to be Joe Pop psychologist, but yeah, here's what I've been dying to Why ask you. Why don't you admit it, but you are. I hear you talk about mommy. I've heard a former chiropractor brother mm -hmm. mentioned once. Yeah. How come you never mention your father? How come I don't mention him? Yeah, like you never Because I have nothing to do with him. Is he living? Yes. And you haven't had anything to do with him for... For, I would say, 20-some years. See, this... I hate to break the news to you. This show is a radio show. And even though there are things in my life that I discuss here because it's part of me and my personality and my existence, uh, this is not like a biography. I know. And that's what I mean. It's just that we are so interested. Interested I, in what? Interested in everything about you. Well, you, you wouldn't be interested in him at all, believe me. He's one of the least interesting people I can imagine. Well, he missed out because you are very interesting, and I do listen every day. Well, thanks for sucking around. Enjoy your lunch. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye-bye. Come on, Mary. Dig in there. It's uh, The Price is Right. Mmm. My God. You think there's enough food here? Jesus. Joseph and Esther. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's fantastic. It's not good. It's spectacular. Sensational. But you didn't give me my knife back, and I'll never forgive you for that. Because if I'm going to eat my... <laughs> That's, I don't want to make you feel bad, but if I can't cut my sausage, if you can't cut your meat, whatever they say there in England. Oh, then I just dropped it on the damn floor. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Okay, this is beautiful. What a spread, huh? Even Aaron Summers never saw a spread like this. What? Well, what do you mean by that? We used to do this all the time until you came to work here. And then we stopped because we figured that people that worked at INZ don't deserve to eat for free. What do you mean by that? You didn't work at INZ? You were at INZ more than a short while, sweetheart. Don't tell me you were when I left, you left. Yeah. That's what, that's what Ron and Ron said, too. When Neil left Zeta, we did, too. That's what they said. It's an inside radio today. Here's a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello? Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. First time caller. All right. Uh, home is Rochester, New York. I've been down in Florida for uh, about three years now. Yeah. Went back, went back to Rochester. When's the last time you went to Nick Tahoe's? I've never been to Nick Tahoe's. You haven't? For a garbage plate. No? Yes, I have. Yeah. How about Vic and Irv? Yeah. And that, that has How about Don and Bob's? How about... See, this is the problem with Rochester, is that those of us who are from there, even though it's you know, a relatively nice city when the lilacs are out and the sun is shining two weeks out of the year, <laughs> but we try to make something out of nothing, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
I no, no, you know, you know that I'm right. We, because it's right. a hor- the weather is horrendous. It's a very pleasant city if it had nice weather, but it doesn't. And other than uh, some very, very good restaurants, which is all all I ever talk about is Don and Bob's and Sea Breeze, and that's it. Rochester is basically nothingness. Yeah, yeah. And most of the people who live there, you know, they, even though they're very nice, you know, there's some Italians, there's some Jews, there's some black people, but generally they're farmers. It's pretty sad. When Am you I gotta, right? Upstate yeah, New right. York it's, is a bunch yeah, of farmers. It's pretty sad when you got to talk about a garbage plate. Is right. Famous. That's the highlight. Yeah, when you say, hey, do you ever have the garbage plate? And you say, that's the highlight of Rochester. Then it almost makes you feel like you're talking about Buffalo. Yeah, I'm sure the rest of your listeners are fascinated But just keep in mind that Rochester is like Manhattan compared to Buffalo, so that makes <laughs> us feel a lot better. Listen, I got one question. Uh, I live in Orlando, so I can't pick you up very often just when I get down this way. Yeah. Um, what but you'll be I... able to hear Erin Summers, although you can hear already, oh, I guess. she's great. You could, uh, she's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, what went on a couple of years ago with you and Weez? What went on? Yeah, was there like a... Oh, he was doing that every year. Every time they would come down here, he'd try to do this contrived thing, and he, they would uh, raise money to buy billboards. See, we raise money on this station to try to help charity. Uh-huh. We don't raise money to put up stupid billboards to waste money to try to piss somebody off in Buffalo. A okay. bunch of uh, nose pickers. Did he do it this year or no? Uh, I don't even remember. We, don't, we just don't yes. pay... He, yeah, the answer is yes. But we don't pay any attention to the billboard or to him. In fact, we did do some nice things on the billboard to deface it. Not we, but I mean some of the listeners who were very irate. And uh, he's, he's just a, a bandwagon jumper. He's not even from Buffalo. He's on here in Rochester. Yeah. And even the people there would call up. We'd get calls from people in Rochester saying, don't believe any of it. He's a phony. He's just trying to exploit the situation. The first year he came down here, he never even had the balls because we exposed him on the air for being the phony that he is. And a lot of people start getting very irate and making idle and not so veiled threats to him. He didn't have the balls to leave the hotel room. He watched the game in his hotel did, did on he, television. <laughs> he, he never got on your show and uh, you never had a... Uh, a yeah, we, we had him on the air a couple of times. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, that's it. He, Thank he's you. in the perfect market for him. <laughs> have a great day, pal. Take care. See ya. Open line in uh, Broward, 524 and the green line, 1-800-944. The only problem I got here, let's see, I do, I got a spoon. I got too much. We got to get the news on for about 25 minutes, okay? So I can finish eating all of this. Come on, Adam, dig in, man. 